Today I'll show you how I made my home MMA mat area in the basement and went from this to this. You'll also learn other options when it comes to building mat space at home. Both cheaper and more expensive, with more or less work, so you can decide what's right for you. First, here's the TLDR version of the build. Put the polyethylene panels down and tighten them. Frame the entire mat area with wooden boards by drilling holes into the boards, marking the floor with paint through the hole in the board so you know exactly where to drill by drilling into the concrete, hammering in the plastic anchors to the floor, and by screwing the boards into the concrete floor so the panels don't move. Place the vinyl over it, pull it as much as possible with the help of weights in order for it not to be loose, bolt down the vinyl to the wooden boards and cut out the excess vinyl. Hi, my name is Mark Leitner from MMACoach.net where we help coaches, fighters and enthusiasts reach their full MMA potential. And today I'll be teaching you how to build an affordable home MMA mat space. Before we get into details, let me tell you what options I've considered, their cost and pros and cons. Then I'll give you the exact blueprint of what I did. You can skip to that part by clicking on one of the timestamps. All the prices are for 20 square meters of mat area without shipping. I've tried to find all mats of 4 cm thickness for better comparison as I've used that thickness in my build. It wasn't always possible so I've included other thicknesses too. The prices are informative and can vary from website to website. Option 1. Dolamur Flexi Roll. If you don't want to mess around with building anything and you don't mind paying more, you should go with Dolamur Flexi Roll mats. Or better yet, Flexi Connect, which is a mat with Velcro that easily connects with other rolls. A great thing about this type of mats is that they are very light since they are made from polyethylene foam. You just have to roll them once, connect them and that is it. You can also roll back the whole thing together if you need to free up the space. This is the most elegant solution but also expensive and much more than I planned on spending on home mats. If the money is not an issue, I recommend buying them. I've also looked into buying similar mats from Alibaba, but the freight was too expensive and the vinyl is glued to the polyethylene foam, while Dolamur uses heat gluing which is better and there is a less chance of it separating. So I decided against both the Dolamur and the Chinese version of it. Option 2. Puzzle Interlocking Mats Made out of EVA foam and among the cheapest of the options, they are one of the easiest to install, but I wanted to avoid puzzle mats for several reasons. Number one, they are too thin and not at all comfortable to fall on. If you are going to be doing takedowns, they are a poor choice. At least the ones I've tried. They are okay for rolling though. Number two is that the toes get stuck on them when running or while moving around. I don't mean between the mats as they are well connected, but on the actual mats. That can be painful and it is best if you can avoid it. They are my least favorite option. Option number three, rebonded sponge with a vinyl cover. This is the most common option in Serbia and I've had it in several gyms. Rebonded sponge is a hard pressed sponge usually made into two meters by one meter panels which are then placed on the floor and covered with vinyl. The panels can come in various densities or hardness. This is a good option and among the cheaper ones but I don't like that the sponge panels are heavy and difficult to move around alone as they are very flexible and they can also leave debris. Option number four, carpet padding with tarp over it. This is probably the cheapest option and I think I saw it on Reddit. It is only applicable if you live in the US as I've seen this type of carpet padding being sold for cheap there. Not sure about other countries. Unfortunately, here in Serbia we don't have such a thing. Judging from the pictures, carpet padding in the US is just like a very thin layer of rebonded sponge. Combine several layers of carpet padding and glue tarp on top of it and you have an affordable home mat solution. I'm not sure about the price, but this is probably the cheapest option if you live in the US. Check out the links below if you're interested in this way of building your home gym. Option number 5. Judo mats. They come either as 2x1 meter or 1x1 one one meter mats with various thicknesses. They are excellent, but the most expensive option. One downside is that they have a rougher surface than vinyl. 
It offers a better grip, but can cause matte burns if you are not used to it. And cutting them to fit your area can be tricky. They are usually filled with rebonded sponge. Option 6. ITIS Trusselan Mats ITIS stands for Invisible Trusselan Interlocking System. They look similar to judo mats, but they have a polyethylene base. The mats have an interesting way of sticking together. Similar to puzzle interlocking mats, but the hooking system is concealed. Unlike them, they are probably very expensive, but I cannot say for sure as the price is not listed on the website. Option 7. Folding mats. They are comparable to Dolomur Flexi-Roll mats when it comes to ease of installation. Just unfold them, connect several of them together with Velcro, and you have your home gym in no time. They could be a great option if you want to take them outdoors or as a warm-up mat in competitions. Like Dolomur mats, they use polyethylene foam that makes them light. The downside is that your toes can get stuck between panels as they are separated a bit so the mats can fold. They are not very cheap. Option 8. Polyethylene panels with vinyl cover, which is my preferred option. This is the option I chose to go with as it combines several of the best characteristics of the other methods. First, you use polyethylene panels which are light, easy to move around, offer excellent shock absorption and are not too expensive. Next, you have the whole mat area as one big mat which is more hygienic since no dirt or germs can get trapped between mats like with judo mats. It is very easy to clean. I first got an idea when watching the video from Gracie Breakdown guys on their Gracie mat making process. I will link the video below so you can watch it. They also used polyethylene panels and vinyl, but the whole build was much more complicated since it was for their academy and not home. Hence it was very big. They used several layers of foam and they stitched or glued velcro tape on the ends of the vinyl which is great and it makes it easy to get the vinyl on and off if needed but much more complicated and expensive to do. I chose to do a very simple and cost effective version of this build. The downside is that it takes some effort to build it, especially if you're going to do all the work by yourself like me. And it is not easily removable like dolom or flexi roll or folding mats. The mat area can be dismantled if necessary, but it would take some time. Now that we've covered the options, let's dive into the tutorial on how you can build your own home gym using the method I chose. Step number one, measure the area you want to put mats in and determine how many square meters or feet you need. Step number two, order polyethylene foam from your local supplier. Do a Google search and get a few offers. I ordered 20 square meters from a local company that imports polyethylene foam from Italy and they delivered 10 2 meters by 1 meter panels of 4 centimeter thickness. There are less and more thick options and it's up to you to decide what you need. For me, 4 centimeters was just right. When I looked around online, I wanted to get the same one as Dolomore, but as panels, not rolls. I couldn't get the same density. Dolomore's European seller states that the mat's density is 60 kg per cubic meter. But the Italian supplier highly recommended that I get half that density since they've had some bad experiences with selling Dolomore's density to MMA people in Italy. Some of them got injured and reported the mat to be hard. I don't know if this is true, but I decided to listen to them and ordered what they suggested. I even had the chance to see and test the samples. You might be able to order them too, and I suggest you ask them to send you two samples of different densities. Since I have small kids, I decided on a softer one, which turned out great. Step number three, buy vinyl. Add about 10 to 20 centimeters in all directions to your mat area measurement and order vinyl. If necessary, have it heat glued so everything is in one piece. I ordered 630 gram vinyl, and people also use 680 gram vinyl for gyms too. Step number four, measure the perimeter of your area and buy wooden boards. I chose two centimeter by three centimeter ones that are curved on the outside since I don't want anyone injuring their feet if they step on the board. I deliberately chose a board that is half the thickness of a mat, so when you step on the mat close to the board, it will not sink lower than the board, and that can prevent some injuries. Step number five, tighten the panels together and drill in the wooden frame around them. This step actually consists of several, so let's break it down. A. Tighten the panels together. I first placed them on Itison, 
which is a type of floor cover that I have in my basement. I don't know the English term for it, but it does provide a little bit of cushioning, so it's better than placing the panels directly onto concrete. Then I tighten them as much as possible and will later use weights for this purpose too. B. Place the wooden frame on the perimeter. C. Drill 8mm holes in the boards. For a 2 meter board, I drilled 3 holes. For a 1 meter board, I drilled 2. For smaller ones, I also drilled 2 as they need to be stable and one hole is not going to do it. Just drill the holes for one board first. You will see why soon. I started with the ones that touch the wall. D. Drill into concrete. Change the drill if you're drilling into concrete like I did. Use the one for concrete and drill where your drill for the wood has left the mark. Or if you're not sure like I wasn't most of the time, as it wasn't always clear on Itison, put some color on a Chinese chopstick and color the Itison through the hole in the board so you know exactly where to drill. Then I drilled into concrete, vacuumed the concrete dust and hammered in the plastic anchors for the screws. E. Screw in the board to the floor. Position the board again next to the wall so the holes in the board match the holes in the concrete and screw the board in. Then do the same for the next board. If you're wondering why I didn't drill all the boards first and all the holes in concrete instead of doing it one by one, there is a good reason. I did all the boards that touch the wall first since I knew exactly where they will be. But as soon as I reached the outside of the perimeter and since the panels were not always exactly 2 meters by 1 meter but sometimes 1 centimeter longer or half a centimeter wider, I decided to first tighten the panels together again with the help of weights, push them with the outside boards towards the wall to achieve a snug fit, then drill the wood, leave a colored mark, drill the concrete, place the anchors, then push the outside boards back into place and drill into it. So a lot of pushing of panels with boards. That way I achieved a tight fit, but I had to do everything for each board which made the work slower. Step number 6. Place the vinyl cover over the framed panel area. I rolled it out and positioned it as correctly as possible over the framed area. Step number 7. Bolt down the vinyl with screws and washers. This required me to pull on the vinyl frequently in order to get it to be as straight as possible and to use weights to keep one side from sliding, while I was bolting down the other one. Since the boards are 2 cm thick, I bought 1.6 cm screws and washers which would be pressed into the vinyl and bored by the screw and hence hold everything in place. Whenever I finished one side, I pulled on the vinyl from the opposite side to make it more straight. It was now stabilized by the screws and washers on the other side, so I pulled and placed weights right in front of where I would work on bolting down. I repeated that for the entire length of the perimeter until I got everything done. Step number 8. Cut out the excess vinyl. For this step, I used both the scissors and the scalpel and tried to cut right next to the board. And then it was all done and I was very proud of myself as I did everything myself even though I'm the least handy guy in the universe and never before have I done anything similar. I couldn't have done it if it wasn't for the advice of this man who explained every step I needed to take. The only mistake I made was that I placed the smooth side of the vinyl on top. I should have put the less smooth one, which offers a bit more grip, but this one is okay too. For me, polyethylene panels and vinyl option is the absolute winner when it comes to both cost and quality and I'm very glad that I chose it. What do you think of the build? What option did you or will you choose for your home gym? Let me know in the comments below. Like and share this video if you like it, and if you like to significantly improve your MMA skills, sign up for a free course called Six Cardinal Sins of MMA Training that explains the six most common mistakes in MMA training and how to easily fix them. I will see you again very soon.